morning. It's good to be in God's house. Uh, we're thankful that you're able to come and, and that we're able to bring this video to you this Easter Sunday morning. Um, and we pray that Easter finds you good. We pray that Easter finds you healthy and, and doing well. Um, but, you know, even in the midst of, of, of being healthy and doing well, you know, there's that uncertainty that's out there that, that has so many of us, so many, you know, friends of mine, uh, colleagues, people that, that I encounter on a day-to-day -day basis, so many people, you know, literally living today without hope. I thought about that. I thought about the fact that so many things have been canceled. You know, I love golf. I love to watch the Masters golf tournament. And, and I know it's postponed, but it was, I think, supposed to be this weekend. And I and, uh, was looking forward to watching it. I've tried to go. I've been once before. It's incredible. But then they canceled it. And then other sporting events canceled. And baseball season uh, it's, it's been postponed and the college baseball canceled. Everything canceled. And I thought about that. We, we've canceled public church meetings. We're doing it, you know, video through the YouTube. Uh, and, and so we're, there's churches. You pass the sign. Services temporarily canceled. Everything's canceled. And, and so, but Easter was coming and Easter was on the edge uh, or on the verge. And, and, I, and I thought about that. What are we going to do for Easter? You know, surely, surely they're not going to cancel Easter. And yet, all of the fluff, if you would, go, go there with me just a second. All of the fluff of Easter has been canceled. All of the extracurricular activities, if you would, that go along with Easter, you know, the, the, the family gatherings, the Easter egg hunts, the, 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 the social gatherings, all tied in with, with this season of Easter, they have been postponed or canceled or pushed to the side right now. And yet Easter's still here. And yet we don't have the, the, the big, you know, services. The, the, you know, I wish this place was jam-packed with people. I love Easter Sunday morning. I love to have sunrise services and early services. I love to get together with God's people and, 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 and worship the risen Savior. And, and, and you know, we, we come and we have special services. We do a breakfast and a family time. It's awesome. We always close our Easter or some point in that Easter service with the flowering of the cross. And, 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 and so, you know, a lot of those things we can't do. A lot of those things have been canceled. And yet Easter is not canceled. The fluff is. So when you move away the fluff, when you uncover everything that, that, that's Easter as we think it should be, and you, and you move everything to the side, all the fluff, what's left? What's left? There's a story. In God's Word, in the book of John, chapter number 20, and it talks about God's people. The disciples and, and, and the early church, if you would, it talks about the people of God. And the people of God, I, I want you to, I want you to, 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 to go to back with me there just a moment. I want you to journey back in time for just a few moments and, and let's look in to, this, to the people of God. And, and let, let me set this up. This is Easter Sunday day, if you would. Easter Sunday. 
the day of Easter. Now, Mary's already been to the tomb. John and Peter have been to the tomb. They've seen the fact that the stone's not there. They've been to the tomb. They've seen that fact that the, that the, the tomb itself is empty. And so you would think, man, they are part, they are having a celebration. He is who he said he was. He is the Son of God. He is, you know, he said he was going to die. They were going to kill him and destroy this temple. Three days later, I'm going to raise him back up. He did exactly what he said he was going to do. He's exactly who he said he was. No. That's not how we're going to find him. Matter of fact, we're going to find God's disciples, Jesus, his disciples, in a room, in a house, scared to death. Scared to death on Resurrection Sunday. Scared to death because of what's going on on the outside. There's a fear. The Bible says in John chapter 20, and I hope you've got the Word of God, your, your copy of God's Word with, with you as you're going through this with us this morning. God's Word says in John chapter 20, in verse number 19, it says, Then the same day at evening, so it's the day of Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday, so it's the evening of this, same day, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, the Bible says, where the disciples were assembled, so there's where the disciples, where they're assembled at, for fear of the Jews. So they're in this room, they've got their doors closed, they are afraid for their lives. There's fear there. There's fear. They're afraid of the Jews. And, and, and so we find them Easter Sunday scared to death because of the Jews, because of what Jesus, what they had seen. And they saw it. They were there. They saw them arresting. They saw them beat him. They saw the and, 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 and word got to them of, the, of, the, of the, the craziness of the trials. They saw Jesus beaten, bloodied, taken, marched through the streets, told him across. They had been there. They saw it. Their reality had them scared to death. Their reality was as they watched Jesus die. They watched him die. And, 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 and they're, they're free. They're, they're, I mean, they're literally afraid because of what they've seen, what they've heard, what's been going on around them. They're scared to death. You said, wait a minute, preacher. I thought you said this was the disciples. It is the disciples. These are the same guys that saw Jesus, you know, walking on the water and healing the blind and the deaf and, and, the, and the lame and, and those that couldn't speak. This is the one. I mean, my God. And not only that, wait a minute, wait a minute. Not only that, they've been, some of them have, to the tomb. And it's empty. Where in the world is this fear coming from? Where in the world? Why in the world? Are they hung up on what took place prior to what they're seeing right now? Or what they've experienced? Why are they, why is there Easter, Easter night fear and yet Easter morning was an empty tomb? What, what, what's their what's their reasoning for how they how they're you know they're 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 afraid. Why are they afraid? Why are they afraid? You know, 
them up too bad. Let's get honest this morning for just a minute. Because here's truth. Truth is, you've been to that tomb. You've seen, you've seen the tombs empty. You know the fact that, that uh, you know, who he is, who he said. You know, we, we do this every single year. Easter happens over and over and over. And, and you've read the story and you've been there. And, 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 and you know the reality. The reality of what that means. You know that he died for your sins. You know that it was a sacrifice that, that, that he willingly gave when he died on that cross. He did it for you. You get that. You get it. You do. You know that God accepted that sacrifice. You know you're saved. You know you're his family. You're his kids. We, we've talked about that for several. You know, you, you get that. And yet the truth is that there's a lot of God's people. There's a lot of God's church family. There's a lot of God's kids, if you would, that are going to get up this Easter and be scared to death. They're going to be afraid. <clears throat> Not because of the Jews, but because of a disease named COVID-19. And there's this fear. It's that fear of the unknown. It's that fear of the what ifs. It's that fear. And we let that fear come in and rob us of the victorious celebration that should be taking place this morning. We allow fear to take over and to take hold and to hold us in captivity when we should be celebrating. We've got the door shut where we're afraid of the Jews. We're afraid of the virus. We're afraid of the unknown. We're afraid of what CNN or NBC might tell us. We're afraid of what... The, the world meter, the, the one that keeps ticking and ticking and ticking and keeps up and then up and then up in the statistics. We're afraid to look. We're scared. Just like they were. Just like they were. The message that I want to preach to you today, the message that I want you to hear me preach to you today is this. And, 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 and you know, I, I, I preach this from my heart. I preach this with all the passion that I, that I can muster up to, to share this with you. And, and, and here, here's what I have. Do not... Do not lock the doors, hide in fear, and give up on Jesus. Do not give up on Jesus. Don't do it. Don't do it. Do not give up on His power, His might, His ability, what He can and what, what, what you know, without any question, can, has shown us over and over and over. Uh, here, here's the thing, guys. The same Jesus that conquered death, the same Jesus that they put into that tomb and rolled that stone, put the seal on it, put the guards there because we didn't want him coming out. That same Jesus is the one who on that third day gloriously came out. And it's that same Jesus that's right here, right now. Don't you dare... Give up on Jesus. My Bible says this about him. He's the same today as he was yesterday. He's still sovereign. He's still in control. He still knows what he's doing. Don't you give up on Jesus. You know, the Mary took off, went to the tomb, she looked in. She told Peter and John about it. They, they took off. I want to read a little bit of that. I want to read a little bit in, in 
in John chapter 20 because uh, this story is such an awesome story. Verse 1 says, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early. It's still dark. And saw that it was that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Why did the stone get rolled away? Why the stone? So Jesus could come out and he didn't need that stone rolled away to come out. The stone was rolled away so Mary could go in. The stone was rolled away so that Mary could look in. Because she's walking up there, you know, with, with, without hope. She's walking up there thinking she's going to the grave. She's going to take care of things that need to be taken care of. And she's going to the grave. She's not going there with hope. And so, so God wanted her to leave there with hope. He wanted her to leave there. So he pushed the stone away so that Mary could peek in and see that he wasn't there. She ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple, John, whom Jesus loved. And she said to them, Lord, that they've taken away the Lord out of the tomb. And we don't know where they've laid him. So Peter therefore went out and the other disciple. And they were going to the tomb and they ran together. And I love the fact John says, and I ran Peter. And, and they came to the tomb first. And, and verse 5 says this, stooping down, they looked. They saw the linen cloth lying there, yet they did not go in. Simon Peter came, finally went to the, to the tomb, and he saw the linen cloth lying there, and the handkerchief that had been around his head, not lying with the linen cloth, but folded together in place by itself. The other disciple came into the tomb first, went in also. He saw, and they believed. So God rolled it away so they could see. God rolled it away so they could see. They went to a, a, a hopeless place. They were in a hopeless state. You know, everything about everything they'd been involved in at this point is hopeless because they had seen him die. And God rolls the stone away so that he can, he can let them take a look for themselves. And, and, and the Bible says they looked in and they believed. Guys, it's crazy. I get it. I get it. This, this, you know, the uncertainty, the unknown, the, the fears, the, they're real. I get it. I'm not make, I, everybody, everybody understand this. I am not making light of your fear. Because the first person that would, would stand up and tell you, this, this hadn't boogered me, this hadn't bothered me, you know, th th there's so much unknown, so much uncertainty in all the realm of it. But I believe everybody, if they were honest, would say, you know what, there's been times that I've kind of shut the door and I've kind of allowed fear to jump in there. And so God's got the stone rolled away for me. He's got the stone rolled away for you so that you and I can look in because in the midst of our hopelessness, He wants to bring hope. In the midst of our craziness, He wants to bring peace. He wants to bring peace. In John chapter 20 and verse number 19, I want you to see this. John chapter 20, in verse number 19, it says, That same day at evening, being the first day of the week when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst. And he said to them, Peace be with you. He said to them, Peace be with you. I love this fact, guys. They're up there scared to death. They're up there afraid. Just like some of us. Up there, you, you know the doors are shut. Probably freak, maybe some of you have even freaked out over this. It's crazy. It's real. It's, and notice who showed up. Notice who came to them in their fear and I told you, don't you dare give up on Jesus. In the middle of their fear, in the middle of the craziness, in the middle of the unknown and the uncertainty behind the locked doors because they're scared to death of the Jews, the Bible says, he came. Here's what I know. You're going to see this 
message. You're going to see this service on, on Easter Sunday morning, but maybe even on Easter Sunday night, you'll get a phone call. Somebody you know is sick or somebody you know is hurting or somebody you know is going through this. And you know what happens a lot of times, guys? If we're honest, fear sets in. Fear sets in. Monday will come. You'll read the paper, watch the news, and shut the doors again because you're scared. Tuesday will come. You'll come together, shut the door. Wednesday will happen. Thursday, here's what I want you to see. Notice what it says. Behind the doors, they're scared, they're afraid, and Jesus came. Jesus showed up on Easter Eve, if you would, not Easter morning. He's already, uh, but Easter evening, same day. They're scared to death, and Jesus shows up, and he shows up with a message. Because in the midst, in the middle of their crisis, in the middle of shutting the door, in the middle of this pandemic, here's what he says, peace! Peace be with you! Peace! In the middle of your craziness, peace! Jesus came, peace!
with his guys. And you know what? He promises us this. He promises that he will. And he can. Can I tell you something, guys? As Margaret comes to the piano this morning, he didn't die on Calvary's cross. He didn't suffer those nails. He didn't undergo that pain and carry all of the sin of the world so that you and I would simply cower down in our room, shut the door, lock the door, afraid of all that's out there. That's not why he died. That's not why he went through what he went through so that I would live defeated, I would live in, in despair and discouragement. No. Guys, he died for sin so we wouldn't. He rose from the grave so that we would too. He comes to us, the Bible says in the book of John, that I promise you I'm going to send somebody. I'm going to send another me. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit, not Holy Spirit. When I got down on my knees in my living room in Enterprise, Mississippi on a Thursday night, gave my heart to Jesus. At that moment, I was indwelled by the Holy Spirit of God. His Spirit his spirit, the same spirit of God that raised Jesus from the dead and dwells in me. That's called resurrection power. Can I get an amen? You know, you think about it. That power that lives in me. Now watch this, guys. I want to I wanna give you a verse. Paul says to Timothy. In 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7, Paul says to Timothy, he says, God has not given us a spirit of fear. He's not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That's the spirit that lives within me. It's not a spirit of fear. So understand this, that which he's given me, that's how he can walk into that room in the midst of their craziness, in the midst of their fear and their chaos, and he can look at them and with all assurance and all authority, peace in your situation. Guys, understand this. He brings that same peace into our conflict, into our pandemic, into our pains, into our sicknesses. He brings that hope. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for bringing me the hope that I need. Even when I've looked in the tomb and seen it empty, we still fear. He says, let me be God. Let me handle this one. Let me bring peace this Easter. started, a lot of things get canceled. A lot of fluff's gone. And I thought about that. And I thought, you know what? The only thing, the only thing left for the disciples that day, the only thing they had going, they didn't have a, 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 an Easter sunrise service with a whole bunch of other believers. They didn't have breakfast after the service. They didn't have Easter eggs hung scheduled in family outings. They didn't have any of this. You know, all they had, all they had that day was an empty tomb. And, and God's with, with, with a risen Savior bringing peace into their fear. It was enough. I stand before you today with all this
assurance with my heart that the tomb's empty and that's enough. That means my Savior's alive. That means my Jesus is alive. That means that cross didn't win. And that's enough. That means I'm never alone. And that's enough. That means I, no matter where I walk through, David said, if I walk in, you know, through the valley of the shadow of death, he said, my God's with me. That's enough. It's enough to know that my Jesus is alive. I can face anything, no matter what is thrown at me. I can face it because that tomb is empty. And there's one more thing before I pray. I'm going to ask Tracy. And he's going to pan that camera. And he's going to show you something I pray brings hope to that. I know it's something that you miss. I know it's something you love. I know it's something that excites you. I know it's something you look forward to. And so we wanted you to have that hope today. That hope is, is that cross did not win. That our Jesus is alive. That that tomb is empty. And there's peace in my craziness. Wow. Pray with me. Father God, thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you, Jesus, for an empty tomb. Wow. Wow. Lord, I pray for that one that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, that doesn't have the peace that you bring in this pandemic time, in this time of craziness, that you would bring them peace today. And, and, and Jesus, that they would receive you as Lord and Savior. I pray for that one that says, I know I'm saved, but the door shut because I'm scared to death. Jesus, please, in Jesus' name, just step into their pain, into their pandemic, into their fears and bring peace. That's my cry in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing a song. As you, as you get to see that cross, as you see that cross alive, I want you to sing this with everything you got. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. See? 